So in this overview video, we're going to be checking out the Sapphire Pulse RX 5600 XT. Now, if you've been keeping up with tech news or you've been doing your research before buying your next graphics card, you've probably heard a lot about the 5600 series right now because there's been a lot of buzz. So what's happened is, is that manufacturers have got them finally in the shops, but at the same time, AMD released a new BIOS update that gives an 11% performance increase into the card, which is great. The only thing is, is that if you happen to buy a card right now or maybe a month down the line, there could be cards in stock that haven't been sold and are using the old model numbers. That means that you have to update the BIOS yourself. Now, don't fear, it's really, really easy. You can check out our YouTube video on this channel and I'm gonna put the link in the description below. So check that out and let's dive in to this overview. Built on AMD's RDNA gaming architecture using the 7 nanometer process, the Sapphire Pulse RX 5600 XT has 2,304 stream processors that run at a boost clock of up to 1,750 MHz, plus a game clock of 1,615. It's also got 6GB of GDR6 running in it as well. The card can handle up to 4 displays, supporting 1 HDMI 2.0 and 3 display ports at version 1.4. It's VR friendly and it utilizes a single 8 pin power connector. The recommended power supply for the card is at least 500 watts. As always with Sapphire cards, it features a dual BIOS switch that can be found on the side of the card that allows for a quick, convenient switching from performance mode to silent modes. So the Pulse is running the DualX cooling technology alongside with the intelligent fan control. This way you get a perfect balance of performance and noise levels. The fans themselves feature dual ball bearings, which have approximately an 85% longer lifespan while being at least 10% quieter than previous generations. Plus, what's even better with the quick fan connect feature, you're able to quickly replace the fans yourselves without having to go through the hassle of returning the card if anything happens to go wrong with fan heads. As expected on the Sapphire brand, you can always count on top-notch quality builds such as a 12-layer PCB, long-life capacitors, fuse protection, amazing VRM cooling and memory solutions, and this is all achieved while maintaining a rather aesthetically pleasing design. The Sapphire Tricks software gives you your general overview of the card specification and lets you check on your hardware performance. And here you can find the Tricks Boost tab which can help increase performance in games by downscaling multiple resolutions at once using the percentage slider. By lowering it, you can increase performance drastically by selecting a new custom resolution in game, but obviously you will lose some image quality. Also, don't forget to turn on the Radeon Image Sharpening. This contrast adapted sharpening algorithm will give your games extra details that you never knew were even there. And the best part is, is that it doesn't even affect performance that much. So you can just leave it on, forget about it and start to see your games really pop out. Also, let's not forget about the Radeon Anti-Lag that is designed to reduce input latency. And normally, when you saturate your GPU with 100% usage, the CPU will continue to process new frames, which means you can often find the CPU is processing multiple frames, in particular, your inputs ahead of your GPU, which is a no-no. You don't want this happening. So Radeon Anti-Lag aims to solve this problem by preventing the CPU at a driver level from getting more than a frame or two ahead of the GPU. This makes it possible to reduce the latency between what's being processed by the computer and what you see on the monitor. Generally, we can see up to a full frame of latency removed from the chain. So if you think about it, this can actually make playing at 60 FPS feel more like playing at 90 or even 120. Moving on to some benchmarks using Gears of War 5. And while the RX 5600 XT is primarily aimed towards 1080p gaming, it is certainly capable at 1440p entry level. So I wanted to test three resolutions here, 1080p, 1440p, and 1224p, which is 1440p downscaled by 15% using the Trick software. As you can tell in the results below, the performance all around was decent from all three resolutions on ultra settings, but I would definitely run 2024p over 1440p as I find it almost impossible to tell the difference between these two resolutions in terms of the details, but I will definitely feel the performance game in terms of the combat situations when I need to drastically move my mouse more. So we have a top performing card with the Sapphire Pulse RX 5600 here. 1080p gaming is just smashed out of the park. You can run 1440p as well on certain games, but what you could do is just downscale that resolution by 15% using the Trick software, and then you've got more experimental room with more games at higher resolutions if you want to do that. You know, you've also got the anti-lag features, which is great for competitive-minded players, as well as the image sharpening tool to get even more details in those other games as well, which is superb. I just leave the thing on and just go, oh my god, what are all these things popping out of nowhere? But it's dependent on the game as well, depending on the engine, etc. 
Now, because of that AMD BIOS update, it definitely makes the card more competitive in the current market. So it's definitely a card worth looking at if it meets your budgetary requirements. Now, if you do happen to be apprehensive about updating the BIOS, honestly, it's a piece of cake. It's no problem whatsoever. It's only a couple of clicks and then you've done it don't have to ever worry about it again and if something does happen to go wrong you have the dual bars feature on the card so more than likely you'll be able to recover the card no problems whatsoever but anyways thanks for tuning into this overview i hope it's helpful for some people if not make sure to check out some other reviews overviews out there on the internet there's plenty out there always make sure to do your homework before buying any new graphics card anyway take care have fun and see you next time